Hello, everyone. In this session, we're going to talk about financial statement for limited companies and to looking at the practice assessment one from the AGF side. The basic information is same for most of the exam, but a few things you have to know. Um, how many hours is the exam and how many questions. So these two are very much important. So the exam duration will be two hours and uh, 30 minute. Eight question you have to answer and every single question is mandatory. So there is no optional question. There is no way we can skip any question. Normally question number one, two and six uh, that like be presented with a table. And question number three, four, and eight is the writing task. So we need to be make sure like uh, this exam will be the uh, mixing of writing and the calculation portion. Even though we are looking at more question from the calculation part, so expecting more marks, but there will be some writing task as well. So question number one, two, three, four, one, two, five, six, seven will be the calculation part. And question number three, four, and eight will be the writing part. All right, let's start with our uh, session. Let's start with the first question. The first question will give us 32 marks. So this question could be uh, consolidation. This, this question could be the cash flow statement. And this question could be to prepare the statement of financial position. So let's have a look what we have here. First, we're going to look at our requirement. It's a draft a reconciliation of profit before tax to net cash from the operating activities and draft the statement of cash flow for uh, C limited for the year ended. So we're looking at the cash flow statement. Remember that the cash flow statement we prepare based on um, the IS7 indirect method but it is not necessary you have to know both indirect and direct. In the exam, you only follow the indirect method. That means the cash flow statement will start from cash flow from operating activities. And uh, the first uh, starting point will be uh, operating profit. So profit before tax from the profit and loss account. So this is the indirect method template for the cash flow statement. So if you look at the question, let's quickly read this one. So you have been asked to prepare the statement of cash flow and a statement of change in equity for C Limited for the year ended 31st December 2011. The most recent statement, uh, profit and loss and balance sheet we have here. So that's the profit and loss account. So you can see here on the profit and loss account, we have uh, your revenue, cost of sales, the gross profit, profit on disposal. This is very important, profit on disposal. And uh, then you have a distribution cost, admin cost, Profit from operation, that's important because this will be our one of the information we need. Then finance cost, finance cost is also important because finance cost is on the operating activities, but actually the finance cost have no impact. So finance cost first we add as a finance cost and later on we just take away as the interest paid. So finance cost is the interest paid. So first we add back. The reason we add back because we said a finance cost is not part of the business trading activities. What does that mean? That means uh, it is not necessary. Every single business have to have a finance cost. Now, for example, if a business don't have any business loan, that means this business don't have a finance cost. And if the business have a loan, only that time the business can pay the interest. So for that reason, first we want to see how much is the business making the profit without paying the finance cost? And later on, it is the expense for the business we have to pay. So that's why we take it out. And after that, we have a profit before tax. So this is our starting point. We start our question answer from this point, profit before tax. And after that, we added the finance cost to try to see how much the profit is supposed to be without paying the finance cost. All right, then we have a tax. Then we have a profit from the continuous operation. This is also important because this is a part of our SOCI statement of changes in equity. So the reason uh, we take only the profit from the continuing operation because other comprehensive income, 7,000 is the revelation. Now the revelation is the unrealized gain. What does that mean, unrealized gain? Unrealized gain means 
Uh, we have a gain, but we don't we don't have it realized yet. What does that mean? That means, for example, we have a land. Let's say ten years before so we have a land. We purchase a land for ten thousand, and now the land value is fifteen thousand. So we have a gain clearly five thousand because I buy ten years before ten thousand. Today the value is fifteen. So five years is gain. But the question is, where is the five thousand gain? So the answer is unless or until we sell the asset, we cannot have this gain. So only we can have this 5,000 when we're going to sell this asset. So that will be realized. So when the gain is on the asset, but unless we sell the asset, this cash cannot be converted into like physical money. It is called unrealized gain. So any sort of revelation we make, it is unrealized gain until we sell the asset, it is not realized. So for that reason, you have to show this one separate as other comprehensive income. We cannot show this one as a uh, uh, realized gain or profit from the continuous operation. So this profit, 12,855, clearly only from the, uh, from the trading, not from any revelation. All right, now we have some more information. It's a further information. We have a total depreciation charge for the year. So this is the amount. Very carefully, this three zero. So that means if we consider the depreciation, you consider only four nine nine two. Don't take this three zero because we are ignoring the three zero by uh, inserting three zero on the top. Property, plant, and equipment with a carrying amount for uh, five forty three was sold in the year. Remember that that is like the investing activities uh, when you sold the asset. And obviously we can sell, we can see we sold it uh, 543, but that was the carrying amount. So very important information, you have carrying amount. Remember that carrying amount is the net book value. So cost minus depreciation means it's the carrying value. So that means if we have a carrying value, this is not with the profit. So how much you sold it for? So 543, that was the cost. And we make a profit, if you remember, profit on disposal, 139. If we add this 139 with that, that will tell me how much I sold it for. So my cost was 543 and make a profit 139. So I sold it for 682. So this will be our part of our uh, investing activities very careful with that then we have a revelation of 700,000 revelation 700,000 or 7,000 this one has have impact on the PPE property plant and equipment so you need to look at how much was the opening balance how much I sold it how much is the closing balance and we have to revalue this asset so 7,000 will be added with the PPE uh, property plant equipment and dividend 4,000 was paid during the year Remember that a dividend paid is the financing activities. If there is a dividend received, this is the investing activities because you invest some money to some company and you're receiving the dividend, that's your investment income. But if you pay the dividend, that means someone invests on your company, so you are giving to them, so it's the financing activities. Very careful with that. All right, so this is our profit and loss account. The next one we have here, that is statement of financial position or balance sheet. Let's quickly look that. So we can see we have an asset, we have a non-current asset, we have a current asset, and we have equity, we have a bank loan, and we have a current liability and uh, a net asset. So it's very important to understand a few things. The first thing, look at PPE. So how much was the PPE at the beginning? 31, now it's 77. We need to find how much is the addition. So from the cash flow statement, we're looking at how much cash actually gone from the business and how much cash actually received by the business. So if we buy more asset, that means there's outflow because if I buy more asset, I paid more money. <clears throat> On the other hand, we have a working capital changes. This is inventory, trade receivables, and cash and cash equivalent. So inventory is, uh, if it is reduced, you can see the inventory was 18 and now it is 22. That means inventory is increased. Remember that if the inventory is increased, it is outflow. That means I buy more inventory, so cash is going from me. So if I have increased in inventory, that means it's a cash outflow, not inflow. Very careful with that. Trade receivable is the same. 
trade receivables we can see trade receivables means the outstanding credit customer it was 15 now it is 18 increase that means now it is a less customer paying me so if a less customer pay me that means i have more money uh, that i have outflow because if the receivables is decreased that means more customer pay me if it is increased that means now people holding the more money so it is outflow as well very careful with that receivables increase means is outflow outflow of the cash receivables decrease means is inflow the way it decreases uh, inflow let's say for example it was before 10000 and now it is 8000 that means 2000 people paid to me that's why it is decreasing and if it is they paid to me is inflow for me money is coming on the other hand, we have a share capital, a share premium. These two, we show it together. So we added this two and we added this two. Find the difference. It is inflow. Revelation surplus, 7,000. We already said it will go to the PPE. Uh, return earnings don't have an uh, impact on the cash flow statement. Uh, because of the return earnings, we don't have um, uh, any impact on the cash flow statement. So uh, you need to understand a few things and you have to remember it. Then we have a bank loan. Yes, the bank loan we can see here. Uh, we have 18 before now it is 440. So because of the bank loan, 22,000 pound came to the business. So looking at only how much money in actually to the business. Only cash flow. Return on all the profit we have. Remember, it is a profit that come from the profit and loss account every year. So it is uh, all the accounts is prepared based on the accrual concept. An accrual concept doesn't mean uh, all the money you have. For example, if I make a lot of credit sell, and unless the customer pay to me, so I don't have any money. So we're looking at how much money we have actually here. So we're looking at only and solely cash outflow and inflow, simple as this. Then we have here the trade payable. This is opposite. If my trade payable is increased, it is good for me because now I pay them later. So I hold more money as a cash inflow. Tax liability you need to look at, you need to do some workings to find how much tax I pay during the year. And the bank overdraft is not relevant because the money is not going or money is not coming. All right, now we have a, a little bit analysis of this question. Now we can start and we can see if we solve it together. So let's have a look. Our first thing, we'll start with our uh, operating activities. So we need this information so we'll keep in the site all right the first we start with profit of profit before tax as we said so it's very important to know which one you start with profit before tax so profit before tax and we we'll start with our uh, 19,000 no, 16,400 Profit before tax, so 16,400. Adjustment for few things. The first thing we do adjustment for depreciation because depreciation is a non-cash item. Because of the depreciation, there is no actual cash movement from the business. Just on the paper, because of the depreciation, we never paid any money to anyone, no money gone from the bank. So depreciation, just a non-cash item. So we need to add, um, we need to put it back. So he said, because of the, because of the depreciation, no actual cash movement from the bank so we need to add it back uh, we should not claim this on expense because it is just depreciation the next one we have here the adjustment for the ppe profit uh, on disposal of the non-current asset so proceed of ppe now remember that uh, 139 we have is a profit if there is a profit you always take it out and put the minus sign remember that if there is a loss it will be positive so if there is a profit is minus if there is a loss we need to add it back the reason is this profit is is not the trading profit so let's say we have a business to selling the flowers now we might have a one or two computer that we can sell but selling the computer is not our main business so our main business is to selling the flowers so if we make some money by selling some computer because we want to buy the new one that means this profit is not from the trading so you have to make sure like we take it out and later on we'll see how much you sold it for it will come to the investing activities not from the trading this is the profit from operating activities so this one is not part of our operation by selling the fixed asset 
All right, the finance cost, as we said, the interest cost we have to add back because it is not necessary. Every business have a finance cost. Finance cost is not my trading cost. If I don't have any loan, I never pay any finance cost. So I need to see how much the profit I should have without the finance cost. The next three column, I need to do three things, inventory and trade receivables and payable. So you say adjustment for inventory, adjustment for receivables and adjustment for payable. Now, inventory receivables have the same treatment. Remember that if it is increase or decrease, it will be inflow or outflow. So let's have a look at our financial statement and to just keep on the corner. Let's have a look how much is increase or decrease. So inventory, so you can see here, we had 18,608. Now it is 22,732. The difference we have here, that is 4124, 4124. This 4124 is the outflow because we buy more inventory, it is increased. Before it was 18, now it is 22. That means we buy more, it increased. If I buy more, cash is going from me, so it is outflow. So minus 4124. The next one, we have a trade receivables. The trade receivables, we have the same story. It is increasing. So people paying less money, that means we have an outflow. If it is decreases in flow because people are paying more to me. So minus the difference here we have 3089. And the payables, the payables we have here that we can see. 12 and 14 is increasing. So I used to pay my supplier <clears throat> 12,000, but now obviously like it is increasing. So I'm not paying quickly. So now the supplier expecting 14,000 pounds from me before every year they're expecting only twelve thousand. so my liability before it was 12 now it's 14 so my liability is increasing so i'm not paying uh on time or i'm not paying uh with the with the duration or maybe i'm extending my date or the supplier i said i'll pay you later for any reason i'm not paying so if i pay less compared to the last year so i have more money with me so it's inflow so the difference between these two we have here, and that is a two three nine six, and that it. All right. The next one we said like two thing uh, cash generated from the operation. So you can see here, if I do the business, and after this adjustment, actually from the business I make nineteen thousand six hundred thirty six, even though from the accounts according to according to the accrual concept. The accounts it says we make only 16,400, but actually the cash came to the business 19,636. The next two adjustments we have that is for our tax and the finance cost. As I said, the finance cost we need to pay because uh, money is going from us because we took the loan. And the last one we have here is the tax paid. Now, for the tax, we need to do a little bit of workings. So let's have a look, what is the tax paid? How much tax we pay during the year? To find the tax paid, we need to know how much was the tax at the beginning of the year. So tax liability, 4120. So it's a 4120 opening. Then how much we paid during the year? So during the year, it is from the profit and loss account and the closing. So the closing, at the end of the year, how much is still we have a liability? So 3270 still we have liability so 3270 still we need to pay and how much we already paid during the year we need to be added that so let's have a look at our profit and loss account so if we look at our profit and loss account and we see this year 3546 this is our during the year 3546 so we need to do that Opening plus during the year minus the closing. So let's try to see how much we have here. So four one two zero plus thirty five four six minus thirty two seven zero. So four three nine six. Four three nine six that we paid during the year. So we said we paid during the year. Um, 
getting the yearly paid. 4396. All right, so our uh, profit and uh, operating uh, activities is done. So profit from operating activities. Now I move to our next one. This is the profit from investing and financing. It's not that big anyway. So let's have a look. First open the caution. So let's see if we can open both at the same time. Yes, actually you can open both at the same time. So you don't have to keep crossing. So very good. One well, you can keep on that side. All right. So let's have a look. The first one we have done. Now we have a net cash from operating activities. The same one we have here, 20,000. Uh, sorry, 12,000. So this one in the tax paid is a minus. So 12,014. 12,014. That's the one we have from the top. Net cash generated from the operating activities. Now the investing activity is very simple. We need to see how much we make the proceed for the PPE. Property, plant, and equipment. So proceed of PPE. Proceed on disposal of PPE. So how much you sold it for? If you remember, we sold it for the carrying value was 543 and we make a profit of 139. So if we added this two, that will tell us how much you sold it for. So 682. So we can actually do the workings here. They give us the working, so we need to do that. So proceed on disposal PPE. Carrying amount of the PPE is sold. So the carrying amount we have 543. And we have here how much we make a uh, profit. So profit on disposal PPE, 139. So total 682. This is the one, the first one, 682. So 682. Okay. <clears throat> as the proceed of uh, PPE. All right, the next one we have here, how much we purchase the new PPE? So how much money you spend to purchase the new PPE? So let's have a look, purchase of PPE. There's only two things normally come here. There is some workings here. So PPE at the start of the year, let's have a look how much we have at the beginning of the year. So we need to look at our financial statement. 31,962, so 31,962, that was the beginning of the year. And then uh, depreciation, you have to minus, so minus the depreciation, and that was uh, 4,992, so minus 4,992. Then we have sold something, so if you remember, we sold that, all I sold, uh, the carrying value you have to take away, remember that. The carrying value of the asset that we sold, 553. So carrying value of the PPE we sold, 543. And then we have some revelation, 7,000. We have a revelation, 7,000 in make revelation. And the closing, the closing PPE on our financial statement, 77736. So closing PP is 77736. 36. This is a minus as well. Only the revolution will be plus, everything will be minus except the opening balance. Very careful with that. So we have a closing PPE. Let me see if we have the closing PPE or not. Uh, PP at the end of the year, yeah. All right, so closing PPE, end of the year, the same thing. So we have spent this year 44,309 to buy the new one. So we said 44,000, we spent minus 44,309. If the money is gone, it's a minus because it's outflow. The next one, financing, very very simple is this. So we have a bank loan, and if we have a, uh, if we have a share capital and the dividend. So the bank loan is increased by 28,000. If you have a look, the loan was 18, now 40, that means I, Took some more loan. How much? Twenty two thousand. The difference. So twenty two thousand into the business. <clears throat> then you have a dividend paid four thousand. The caution said during the year we paid a dividend of four thousand. So four thousand is the dividend paid. So four thousand minus. 
and we have some share capital share capital as i said normally you need to add so 20 plus 6250 minus 30 uh, plus 9 so it will tell you how much it is so if you make a difference so that will be money in because of the share capital share issue one three zero seven zero so this one is four thousand is the dividend paid and this one is share capital proceed of share capital that's it now finally all you have to do you have to find the net increase or decrease in the cash and cash equivalent so this is the total adjustment so if you remember our uh, operating is a plus and then we have a investing is a minus so one two zero four zero then minus four three six two seven and then plus thirty one zero seven zero so this is the three we have to adjust now operating uh, investing and financing so this minus this plus this and that will give us our <clears throat> net cash increase or decrease in the uh, cash equivalent so that will be minus five one seven and cash and cash equivalent at the beginning of the year so how much we have on the banks so if you look at our bank at the beginning we have uh, 372 pound so we write 372 plus and if we do that so 517 minus 372 because this is a minus we still have minus the difference is minus 145 now this 145 exactly need to match my closing remember that so this is the 145 bank overdraft is a minus so it has to be matched if it is matched that means my cash flow is matched and we got the full marks in the exam so this question will give you kind of confidence like you get the full marks or not. <clears throat> All right, I don't think so. It's very difficult anyway. So let's move to our next question. The next question we have here, I think that's from the source, statement of changes in equity. So that's quite simple. So let's have a look, our profit and loss and the balance sheet. So let's keep it on our screen. All right, so opening balance from our financial statement. So let's have a look, shared capital. So shared capital, we had 20,000 last year. Opening, so 20,000. Share premium, we had a 6270, just copy from the 2010. There was no revelation, no return earnings. So we had 5398. And that's it. <clears throat> now during the year, we have a revaluation, so total comprehensive income. Remember that revaluation always go to the comprehensive income. So revaluation, we have 7,000. And the dividend we paid, dividend always paid from the written earnings, remember that. So, and we have some uh, profit from the profit and loss account. If you remember the profit we had, that was 12,854. That was my profit. The profit is always part of the return earnings. So 12,854. So if there is a profit, my return earnings will go up. And if there is a dividend, the profit will go down because dividend always paid from the profit. <clears throat> All right, I think that's it. It's not difficult. So the share capital we only issue. So share capital before was uh, 20, now it's 30. So 10,000 we have increased this year. So issue of share capital is 10,000. I think that's it. It's not very difficult at all. So we have uh, share premium as well. So six to share premium, we have six to seven zero and nine three four zero. So that is increase of the share premium as well. You just need to find the difference, how much is increased. Normally it never decreases, always increase. That's it. So we'll have to look at how much was the balance at the 2011 first day, January's opening balance. Then after that, what is the changes and how much is the closing balance? And closing balance normally need to match with our share closing balance. For example, if you look at 30, you should match with the 30, 9340, 9340. Then you have a 7,000 evaluation, 7,000, 14,000, 14,000. So it should match with the closing balance. So you understand you're doing the right way. 
All right, here's the eight marks. Just two minutes quickly. So it's not very difficult anyway. All right, so let's move to our next one. So the next one we have here. <clears throat> so let's have a look what you have the next one. Okay, it's a theory question. So let's have a look. So the first one it says, uh, you are preparing the financial statement for Kelly Media, manufacturer of the computer component for the year ended 31st December 2011. Okay, 17 March 2011. Uh, Kelly Meter purchased the machine for 40,000 or 400,000 for use in the factory. Okay, instead, with a reason, three way in which machine meets the definition of asset. Now, that's quite simple. Uh, <clears throat> definition of the asset so, the definition of the asset is there should be a past event that will create the future economic benefit, and the, the obligation that means risk and return has to be transferred to the person who purchased the asset and there should be a uh, economic value for that and there should be a uh, uh, consideration for that consideration means like if i buy something uh, definitely i should pay something for that for example if you buy asset i pay forty thousand. that means i pay the money to have the asset so the first one is we'll say it is a uh, present economic resources present economic resources and uh, it will create a future economic benefit create future economic benefit and uh, there is a transfer transfer of legal right that means like when i buy the asset i have a right to use it or sell it is up to me I think it is uh, very uh, uh, important to understand that. So there should be a legal right, the person who buy it. And uh, uh, we can say one more thing, like uh, because of the past event and future economic cash flow. I think it's more than enough. Okay, the next one we have is to identify two criteria or other consideration which must be met for the machine to be recognized as an asset in the financial statement. Remember that even if you buy asset, it's not always we can put on the financial statement unless some criteria is fulfilled. So you can uh, you can say about the IS here. So what is the criteria for the tangible asset or intangible asset or IS 36? So you can put it here if you want. But if you don't remember the IS, it's still fine. Uh, unless you put the uh, uh, proper reason why. So the first thing we can say like uh, the information provided must be relevant to the user need and offer a fulfilled presentation of the asset. So who is reading uh, and who is trying to understand what it is, they have to understand what it is. And uh, 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 obviously like it has to be useful for the user. Now, for example, if there is an asset, this asset have no value for the user, so you don't have to put this information on the financial statement. So I need to say it must be, it must be provide faithful information to the user of the FS. And uh, the next one will say <clears throat> the benefit of the information provided are likely to justify the cost. The benefit of the information are likely to justify the cost. And the cost has to be measured reliably. Because if I say I have an asset, for example, you said like all my cust uh, all my customer is my asset or all my employees my asset, and if I ask you like how much it is, can you tell me like how much is the value of your stuff? And you say like I don't know. So if you cannot reliable something, uh, if you cannot measure something reliably, so you cannot recognize this one as the asset. The next one we have here. 
identify two measurement bases which can be used to determine the amount at which the machine should be recognized in the financial statement. Now we can put the cost price. So how much I'm going to show on the financial statement. So we can say cost price. That is called historical price or historical value. And the next one, we can say the current price. How much is the current price or the market value? Or we can put the uh, value in use, value in use. Value in use means like uh, if I use the asset in the business, how much value it will be created. So it's, it's allowable, any sort of thing you put, you can put the historical cost, you can put the current cost, fair value, value in use, uh, the current cost, all cost we can put is, is allowable. Uh, it's not a problem. All right, so if you read your uh, uh, non-tangible asset chapter, you will understand it. So it's a very important to understand the writing question because it's very common in the exam. All right, let's move to the next one. The next one is, is still we have the right equation. Anyway, let's have a look what we have here. A safe limited operator chain of Jim, the company finance director is working on the financial statement for the year ended 31st December 2011 and has brought the following matter uh, to your attention. It says on uh, 18 September 2011, a claim was made against F Limited by a customer in respect of a chest injury he has suffered while lifting weight of one of the company's gym. The customer claimed that he had received inadequate instruction to the use of the weight from the gym personal trainer. F Limited legal advisor have confirmed that there is a highly likely that customer will win the case. Based upon their experience of similar cases of this nature, they have estimated that Damage approximately 15,000 will have to be paid. Now, this is this question is from the provision or from the contingent liability. Now, this chapter, I want all of you to uh, uh, read very carefully because in the exam, there will be 10 mark question definitely from the provision or contingent liability or from the contingent assets. So you have to know like when we keep the provision and when you don't keep, when just just disclose on the financial statement. So when there is a uh, uh, probability and there is a possibility, so you need to understand the difference between the probable. So when something will likely to happen, uh, and obviously like uh, this is like a probable. So if it is the chances is more than 50%, it is probable. Now question said like highly likely, that means it is probable. Highly likely means like most likely you have to pay 15,000 is probable. And probable means the chances is more than 50%. So if there is a probable, we have to record as a provision on the financial statement. So we have to record it on the financial statement. And uh, uh, we need to keep the provision because uh, most likely we have to pay this 15,000. So I have to keep the 15,000 on my financial statement. So I tell like, listen, I have to pay 15,000 because there is a case going on and most likely I have to pay it. But if the chances is less than 50%, we call it possible. If there's a possible, we don't have to keep the provision. We just need to disclose it. So disclose it on the financial statement. So please read this chapter to understand all of these things. On 1st January 2011, F Limited entered into two years lease of some gym equipment under the term of the lease. F Limited was required to make two payments, 20,000 with this fulfilled due to due on 31st of December 2011 and 12. The lease transfer ownership of the equipment of F Limited at the end of the lease term, okay? On 1st January 2011, the present value of the two lease payment is 34. Present value, okay? And the rate of interest is 10%. Now, this lease question, there is a <clears throat> two type of lease payment. The lease payment, the interest payment can be arrears or interest payment can be in advance. So you have to be careful with that. So the rate of interest implicit in the uh, lease is 10%. So you need to be very careful when you do this question because you can pay the interest in advance if the payment is advanced uh, or you can pay the interest at the end of the year like a year. So you need to know, know this both impact. The gym equipment is recognized as a right of use the asset and useful life of five years. This is you we use for the amortization. When you do the depreciation, we use that five years. Okay, let's have a look what we have here. 
So the first one is identify whether the legal claim, legal claim should be treated as a provision or contingent liability in the financial statement. Remember that is a definitely provision. It is not contingent liability. We just don't have to show it because it is a provision. It is a probable. Most likely we need to pay the 15,000. So it is definitely a provision. So it says true. It's a provision. <clears throat> The next one is explain the two reasons why you believe it's a provision. The first thing we'll say it is a probable, probable economic outflow, number one. And number two is we'll say like uh, because of the past event, there is a future obligation of 15,000. So I done, th done th something today and because of that I have to pay 15,000 later on. So because of the past event it create a future economic benefit. If you want to add one more line we can say it can be estimated reliably. That means I know how much I need to pay. So if I don't know how much I need to pay, so I cannot estimate it reliably. A reliable estimate means like how much I need to pay, I know it. So here it is 15,000. <clears> All right. The next one we have here, matter two. And we have one more here. It says, uh, state the accounting treatment. Uh, the accounting treatment is a very simple for that. So the accounting treatment is 15,000. 15,000 we need to recognize as a provision. So provision, and provision is a liability, remember that. Means we need to pay to someone else. Uh, and if there are any expense, so this will be on the final SFP statement of financial position. And if there is any correspondence entry, for example, uh, any sort of that is relevant with that, that will go to the profit and loss account. So the expense, will be on the PNL account. So we need to do debit and credit both. So liability will be the credit and the expense will be debit on the profit and loss account. All right, the next one we have a matter two. Okay, what we have, what's happening here with the matter two is identify whether the following statement are true or false, okay? Let's have a look. F Limited should recognize both right of use of the asset and the lease liability 34,000 at the start of the year of the lease. So they said like both. F Limited should recognize both the right of use asset and the lease liability uh, at 34,017 at the start of the year. This is actually true, I'll show you how, because uh, remember that as I said, there is a present value they already given to us. And if they give us the present value, we have to show in a different way. So if you look at here on the top of the question, it says, on 1st January 2011, the present value of the two years lease, present value, that means how much I'm going to uh, pay in future, and the value, the present value of that asset, of the value of the asset is 34,000. That means I'm not showing the future value, I'm showing the present value. So let's say in future, the total value will be I'm paying 40,000, but the 40,000 I'm converting in today's value, that is 34,017. So I'm showing this value. So this is absolutely true. <clears throat> the next one, it says, explain how matter two should be recognized for F limited in the financial statement for the year ended, 31st December, 2011. Use the figures uh, from the scenario to support your answer. Okay, Let's, uh, there is two things here. The first is 34,000. 710. The next thing is the interest, 10%. We need to look at a few things. We need to look at the non-current liability here, and we need to look at the current liability here. We need to look at the finance cost, that means the interest here. These are three things you have to consider. So we have five years, the depreciation as well. Five years depreciation. So four things we have to consider. So the first thing you can start with, like the asset should be depreciated over five years as the lease transfer ownership of the F Limited. So by the end of the uh, lease term, so we say like the asset should be depreciated 
over five years because the asset will be transferred at the end of the uh, list term. Until this time, the asset belongs to that company. Then uh, how we do the depreciation, you can show the calculations. So this is the one we have, 34,710 divided by five. So the per year depreciation will be 6,942. 6,942 depreciation per year. And the carrying value will be from this one, we have to minus the depreciation. So 37, 34, uh, 7, 10 minus the depreciation, 6, and 942. And that will give us the carrying value of the asset. Anyway, so how much it, it is 27, 768, 27, 768. And then we say it like the next one, the interest expense, the 10% of the interest, so 10% of that. So interest expense will be on the profit and loss account, 10% of that, that is 3471. And uh, finally, we need to say how much we need to uh, recognize as a liability. So we need to say uh, how much we paid. So we need to look at how much we paid uh, during the year. So is there any money we paid? We need to look at that. Yeah, we already paid two payment. If you have a look, the question said we make a two payment, 20,000 already. So how much liability is still left? left let's have a look. So we'll say total we have to pay 34,710 plus the interest 34,710, uh, 34,71 actually. So make it 71. And I already paid 20,000. So I still need to pay 18,181. And that's my non current liability. That's it. So if you can show all this working and explain, it's more than enough to get four marks. All right, let's have a look what we have the next one. Question number five. All right, the question number five is says calculate the amount should be included in the profit and loss. Uh, okay, and uh, then we have a uh, machine recognize. Then we have uh, adjusting, non-adjusting. Okay, again, this thing, this question is kind of like uh, multiple choice or choose and pick question. So let's try this one. <clears throat> it says, the first one, it says like, delimited is preparing financial statement for the year ended 31st December 2011. The corporation tax charge based on the profit of the current year has been estimated 42,000, okay? So the corporation tax charge for the current year is, so for this year is 42,000, all right? The company has underestimated the corporation tax eight. So that means last year it was, previous year means last year. Last year I estimated 8,000 less. So this year is 42, so I need to pay it at plus 42. Remember that if there is any underestimated, we need to add for this year. If there is overestimated, we have to minus. So 42 plus eight, so this year I have to pay, 50,000. So this year I have to charge 50,000. It's not difficult. The next one we have here that is a machine owned by M Limited has suffered physical damage and might have become impaired. Okay. The following information is relevant. So we have a carrying amount, we have a fair value, and value in years. All right, identify the amount at which the machine should be recognized in the statement of financial position. Now remember, the machine should be recognized in uh, the higher of. It's the higher of value in use and the fair value less cost to sales. So between these two, we have to pick the higher one. So the higher one is 9,000. The carrying value is not important here because how much is the carrying value uh, obviously like uh, it's not in the market. So in the market, I can sell it right now 7,800 or rather than selling it, if I use it, it will add me the value 9,000. So between 
this too because of the impairment we have to always look at how the impairment work so impairment is uh, basically uh, the damage we have like for example if i have asset for 10000 and the depreciation is 1000 so my carrying value is 9000 but even though it's carrying value 9000 uh, because of the impairment maybe the asset is damaged or the market is gone or the asset is broken for any reason in the market uh, I can, uh, uh, let's say I can uh, sell it for 5,000 or if I use it, I can use it for 6,000. So between these two, I can take the higher one. So I take the 6,000 one and the difference between six and nine is 3,000 is impaired. So here on the financial statement, I can show only the higher one that is 9,000. But if the exam, in the exam, if the question asks you how much is impaired, remember that the impaired is the difference between the carrying amount and the value in use, the higher of between these two. So here the impairment will be almost 11,000. But the question didn't ask for the impairment. The question asks how much I want to show in the financial statement. So the higher of between the value in use and the fair value less cost to sales. All right, the next one we have identified whether each of the following statement after the reporting period should be classified as adjusting or non-adjusting event. The receipt of information indicating that, uh, that an asset is impaired at the end of the reporting period. So if it is shows it is impaired at the end of the um, period. So impairment is very important. You have to do the adjustment. Remember that. Impairment, always you have to adjust your financial statement. At the end of the year, if I find this asset is impaired, so I need to change the value. Otherwise, the people or the user of the financial statement, they will have a wrong information. They will think like the asset value is 1 million, but actually it is 50,000 because it's impaired. Destruction of warehouse by flood. No, it is it is not adjusting, not non-adjusting event. We just need to show the note on the financial statement and uh, telling that there is a flood on the warehouse. You really don't have to change the financial statement. If they want to find it out after reading that, they can find it out, but we don't have to change it. Announcing a major is uh, reconstruction or restructuring, uh, restructuring, whatever it is, it is also non-adjusting. We just need to disclose on the financial statement. We don't have to change the whole financial statement. Next one, it says a delimited purchase an item on equipment first January 2011 for 36,000 equipment is expected to have a useful life of four years and a scrap value of 4,000. It is depreciated using the straight line method the company prepared financial statement to 31st December each year. Okay, calculate the depreciation should be recognized in the financial statement. It's quite simple. Depreciation is not uh, difficult at all. So all you have to say is 36,000 is the cost minus the scrap value 4,000. Divide the number of year. So how many years they said? Uh, four years. So four, sorry, four years. So let's do that. So we have here 36,000 minus 4,000 divide for 36,000 minus 4,000 and divide Or so 8,000. All right, so the depreciation will be 8,000. All right, the next one we have here, this is quite uh, simple as well. It's not difficult. So let's have a look what we have here. So we have here. Okay, so we have here our next question. It says, uh, Delimiter sold good for 40,000 plus 20% uh, VAT company also issued 10,000 ordinary share capital. Okay, fair enough. So share capital, uh, 10,000 each, uh, one pound and 40,000 plus the VAT. So VAT should be 4,000. So, okay, <clears throat> identify the total total amount of revenue that should be recognized in the statement of financial statement of profit and loss account in respect of this transaction. Okay, remember that the company financial statement, it is uh, it is not relevant to the profit and loss account. 
the share capital is relevant to our uh, share issue, the share capital on the balance sheet or on the statement of financial position. The profit and loss account is only relevant to the income and expense, nothing else. On the other hand, remember that the VAT is not the income for the business. Always remember, the VAT is not income for the business. VAT actually you collect on behalf of the HMRC as like employee for HMRC. So you have to collect the VAT from the customer and later on you have to pay the VAT to HMRC back. So VAT is not your income. You always take the net sale. So you can see the net sale is 40,000. So actually 40,000 is your income. 20% uh, of 4,000 VAT will go to HMRC and share capital is on the balance sheet item, not in the profit and loss account. All right, the next one we have here, uh, that is uh, a limited manufacturer domestic appliance, identify whether each of the following costs should be included in the cost of inventory of, uh, of one of the a limited financial product. Okay, now which one should be included on the, Inventory, which one is not? Selling costs, definitely not. Remember that selling costs should not be included on the inventory cost. Transport cost, yes, included. Direct labor cost, yes. Storage cost, no. So it never included the storage cost or the selling cost as a part of the inventory. So inventory always like if you buy some inventory, the purchase cost or the conversion cost, if there's a direct labor involved, it is cost, delivery cost. This sort of cost can be part of the inventory cost. But the selling costs, marketing costs, or distribution costs, or storage costs, this sort of cost cannot be the part of the inventory. All right, so this is our question number five. So we have three more questions, six, seven, eight. On the next session, we're going to do this question number six, seven, eight. Hopefully, this video helpful for you to understand financial statement for limited companies. And if you have any question, feel free to email me. You have my email on the description. Thank you everyone for watching.